In the last video, we have created a plane geometry object using lab and then we saved it out to a file. The plane object that we created was just a rectangular uh, array of points connected together by a face and it didn't really do much. So it was a static plane which was 20 units wide and 20 units high, which means that it was 10 units away from zero in either direction. And in this video, the point, the, the task is to basically take the same plane and to make the width and height of the plane specifiable by the user. Uh, so to start, let's open up our previous file, which we saved in the last video, and we can see the same plane we were editing before. We can go back to the modify panel, and again we see the parameter, which doesn't really do anything, because we didn't do anything with it in the last video, it's just the default parameter that is created along with the geometry template, and we have the edit plugin button. If we click the edit plugin button, we are brought back to the same graph we were editing last time, which contains a polygon mesh node, essentially it creates a polygon mesh, which takes a bunch of vertices, in our case we have four vertices representing each corner of the plane, and then we also have a one polygon fitting f or going into our polygon meshes polygons input. And this polygon object or polygon node is taking four indices specifying in which order we want these vertices to create our polygon. And the order was one, two, three, f uh, zero, one, two, three, because it's a zero based order. And this is not really relevant in this video because we're not going to change the order or, or composition of our face. All we want to do is modify the, the geometry and not the topology of the plane. So because we're not going to be working with these nodes, we're gonna, I'm gonna mo uh, minimize them for now and uh, just going to take them out of the view so they stay out of the way. And I'm gonna maximize our vertex nodes from the previous video. So each vertex node, as you can remember, uh, represents a point on the plane, and each one of these points is located in one of the four quadrants of the axis in our 3ds Max space. Uh, we have the negative values, uh, which represent the point, the coordinates uh, that are to the negative side of an axis. So this is negative x and negative y here. And then we have positive values, which represent the positive side of an axis. So y is positive here, and uh, x and y are positive here. The value of 10 essentially means that each one of these coordinates is 10 units away from the axis, uh, which also means that the whole that the whole plane is 20 units across and 20 units high. And this is actually the value that we're interested in modifying. So we're not interested in modifying the negative or positive values because we want the points to still to the same, uh, to stay on the same side of each axis, but we do want to, to change the width and the height. So we want to change the distances away from the origin for each one of these points. And there are really two parameters that we are interested in. We are interested in, spe in having our users specify the width and the height of the plane. So the, taking again the parameter my input, we can click here, which is uh, this, this location here specifies the input port for our graph, and the plus two sign here essentially means that there are currently two hidden inputs, and the reason they're hidden essentially is to not clutter up the view and to allow you to have a nice clean schematic view when you start editing a graph. So if I click this button over here, it presents me with the two available inputs, one of them being my input, uh, which is exactly the same input as we have here in the user interface. And if I click it and start dragging it, I can now connect it to uh, to any one of these parameters. And because first parameter that I want to specify is the width, it is going to be connected only to the x coordinates. So let me find all the positive x coordinates. This is, ne is negative, negative. So this one is positive, and this one is positive and connect it just to the positive x coordinates for now. I will also rename this input, so I'm going to rename it my width. And as you can see, the user interface updates accordingly to specify that that uh, this parameter is now called width. And if I if I try to play around with this spinner right now, you can see that the positive sides of the x axis are now moving away and from the x axis. Well, this is nice, but we want to do the same thing for the negative value. So as we move the value to a bigger value, we want the negative side of the plane to also move away from the origin. To do so, we must take this same width and we must 
make a, a negative value out of it. So in this case, it's 16. We want to get negative 16. To do so, we can just multiply by negative 1. And to, uh, to get the multiplication node, I type multiply. And we're interested in just the multiply node, which is Ethereum Utilities Operator Multiply uh, in its name. It's also the third one from the top. And uh, as I explained in the last video, some of the nodes, or actually plenty of the nodes in, in the lab, are something we call generic nodes, which means they can take any two values and they don't really uh, have any specific type until you specify one of these values. So theoretically you can multiply uh, a vector 3 or a polygon mesh or anything else. But in this case we're interested in multiplying this width parameter, which as you can see is system.single. Uh, and that essentially means that it's a floating point value. Single means floating, double means it's a double precision floating point. So I'm going to take this value and pipe it into value 1. And right away, uh, this multiply node knows that we have piped in a single or floating point value and it presents us uh, value 2, which we can specify by hand. And we're going to type minus 1 to multiply our width by a negative 1. So now I can grab the uh, output of this multiply value and put it into all of the x axis values that are negative. And in this case, this one is negative and this one is negative. And now if I go in and change this value, you can see that both X and Y, or rather both both sides of the X axis are moving away from the origin as I'm modifying the value. So the last thing really to do is to do the exact same thing for the y, y value. But the problem right now is that we don't really have an input for our height parameter. To get, add an input for our height parameter, we first need to click this hidden port here and select add input. By selecting add inputs, we can now uh, wire it into the positive uh, aspect or, or, or the positive cord y coordinate nodes, which is this one and this one. And as you can see, we have now added a new input. We do have two inputs here and two corresponding parameters in the 3ds Max user interface. And I'm just going to rename this new input to height and do the same thing with the negative multiplication as I did for the x-axis. So I'm going to add the multiply node. I'm going to wire the height parameter into it. The value 2, which is the second uh, operand for the multiply node, automatically initiates itself into a floating point value where I can specify negative 1. And the output I can now plug into the negative y-axis values. So it's going to be here and here. And just like this, we now have the height parameter. So this controls the width, this controls the height. We can close our our editor now and use this node just like any regular 3ds Max node. We can wire controllers into this. We can we can uh, assign different controllers to this, and we can apply any kind of geometry geometry modifier uh, operators or modifiers on top of this object. So let's just save the scene as something else. So it's going to be playing with parameters. And we are done with this tutorial.